Do you know every word we say is recorded? Whether we know it or not, every word we say is recorded. And when we go before God, he's going to play the recording. <laughs> and we're going to have to hear our own words and give an account why we spoke those words. I have here not only, uh, here's speech, blah, 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 blah. But also, you're going to see we have to give account of our money, our time, our money, our speech. Let's look at this. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 and 11. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah, that everyone can receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether it's good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade people, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Every single one of us are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and he's either going to give us rewards or punishment. But we're all going to appear before him. Get that in, in our heads. We're all someday going to stand before the Messiah, whether it's just him and us or the whole world watching at that time, I'm, I don't know. But I do know, it also says in Corinthians that, uh, well, here it is. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, that's a Messiah, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every single one of your work will be made manifest for the day will declare it because it's revealed by fire and the fire will try everyone's work of what sort it is. And if anyone's work abide, which he's built upon, he'll receive a reward. If anyone's work will be burned, he'll suffer loss, but he himself shall still be saved, but as by fire. Think of it this way. We're building a house, let's say, right? Are we building it out of wood, hay, and stubble? Or are we building it out of gold and silver and precious stones? God's going to take all of our works and he's going to stick it in the fire. And just like uh, someone whose house is on fire and they get out and they're saved, but everything else got burnt, that's what it's going to be. We're going to be there. We have a house and God's going to set it on fire. And then when it's done, that's your reward. God said, okay, great. I know you did good things. I know you did bad things, but let's see how it is. And he's going to stick it in a fire and you and him are going to stand there watching your house burn. And he says, your reward is whatever is left. <laughs> You're still saved. You got saved out of the burning house. You're still saved, but for eternity, this is what your reward is going to be. Oops. <laughs> How many of you ever had your house burned down? Anybody? There's always people here. I know my sister had her house burned down about five, six years ago. You know, all the family was saved, but everything was burnt. You try to look through the ashes and find some things. Well, guess what? We are building spiritual houses. That's what we're, right now, you don't, may not realize it, but every day you are laboring on building your house that's gonna be around for eternity. Do you want a nice house? Or do you not want to want a nice house? What you're doing today, this is what many Christians don't understand. We're not saved by works. I know, neither were the Jews. We do the work because we're building a house. So that's what we have to grasp, all right. Now, 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. If someone therefore purges himself of these, he'll be a vessel to honor, sanctified and ready for the master's use and prepared to every good work. So guess what? In God's house is going to be vessels of gold and vessels of earth. What kind of a vessel do we want to be? How do we want to be used?